34, I mean 54. Um, so that's a whole lot. That, that pool is very big. I think that pool will make up to 60 to 65 percent of the global workforce. And we really need businesses. We need jobs for them. So, and it's a good time also for um, alternative businesses to start, and then we can get them in. So we're getting into the era of the the end or almost the end of the great resignation. So the great resignation actually happened um, between 2020 and 2022. It was massive. All right. A, a bit of the impact slide into 2023. But what you'll be seeing going forward is a bit of stability because people have now learned their lesson that it's not about just moving out. It's also about moving out well. Even people that relocated not everybody got lucky with it. People, Most people that changed their jobs, not everybody got lucky with it. So many people are have learned. So there'll be a bit of stability in terms of human capital movement. So the great resignation is actually coming to an end. I sh everybody should be happy for that. Um, so we have something also around slagging wage growth vis-a-vis um, -vis high inflationary swing. So that what that means is... Um, how much you earn is it going to really still make, make sense your per capita income or your disposal income at the end of the day how much you really have to earn because you earn now a lot is going out of your pocket so um, it's also a time where people should take personal financial planning very seriously because the little money you have now you don't go want to go waste it on lifestyle it is not even a good time to go into debt of any kind. It's not, don't go, it's not a good time. Unless you're a business person, you're so sure. I know that during economic downturns like this, people tend to take loans to, to scale their business because at times interest rates, um, if they are not so crazy moving head on with inflation, is, is, is somewhat good for you. But people usually take advantage. I mean, speak to your financial advisors on this. If you're a business person, is it a good time to take a loan? Because actually, you it's not a wise time to take your money, your personal money to go invest in a business that you're not so sure of what the outcome will be. So um, earnings are going to be impacted very significantly downwards, um, given the inflationary trend. So you want to maximize doing the things that are basic. Um, There'll be increase in entrepreneurship, partnership. So in terms of internal, what you're doing within your company, people are going to be driving products, driving things, increase, increasing partnerships. So be in that space also of creating things within the organization where you are. And also adoption of generative AI. I saw something yesterday on X. I was like, how AI is predicting the future. So now you can use AI. You want to build a model company or with the company that you are today. You can tell AI to tell you how the company is going to be in 50 years time. It will give you the building, everything, how the people should look like and everything. When I was looking at it yesterday, I was like, really, we're not just sitting there in our brain and thinking of the future again. In fact, now the future is something you can create and you're playing it every day um, to yourself. So, I mean, let's, I really would want, I'm looking forward to what AI is doing. AI is, is doing, it's telling people how movies are going to be like how laps are going to be like i'm like how and it's very interesting um you are having changes in industry employment system so given changes that's happened in terms of regulation ai coming in machine learning technological adoption so employment systems will change um certain routine recruitment routines certain job placement certain job requirements are going to change so if you're an industry best person please be on the lookout for this um there's also going to be changes in the mix of occupation so um workforce mix and staffing mix is going to change a bit you're going to have i mean certain companies you go to they have people from multiple climates people working remotely people working physically people doing hybrid so all those dynamics are going to come into the workplace so occupation mix is going to change them um, very very significantly there are people that just say i just want to do this for three years and i'm jumping to something else so those are things you want to look at green jobs and sustainable employment so this is new 
um, you're, we're beginning to see green jobs in terms of um, people who are going into sustainability, people who are driving climate change. So this is a new um, thing that I means it's not really new, new like new, but it's a, it's a thing that the world is paying attention to at this time. So what you want to look at is what certification can I do to also tap into this? And first mover advantage matters. I can tell you that people that have certification now or experts that are playing in the sustainability field are being paid good money, even more than the tech people. So it's a field that you want to go into. If you're working in an organization, they don't have a sustainability champion or what they call an ESG champion. Um, please, if you interested do certifications in them I'm, I'm, I'm expecting people who did physical science in school um to actually take advantage of this as well and even agriculture we read agriculture i mean you take advantage of this as well and of course investment guys are already doing great stuff there um finally entrepreneurship and startups so they'll businesses all new businesses now or entrepreneurs are going to be navigating new business landscape so the way you used to enter business before is no longer the way you enter now and then new business methods and processes are emerging so these are the trends you have to look out to personally as a business and then to drive 2024 um finally on this i want to look at goal setting so We've looked at the outlook, reviewed what happened in previous year, what we look at this year. But importantly is um, goal setting. So goal setting is actually setting a course of action that you want to be accountable for. Simple. So it's actually telling yourself, this is what I want to do. This is how I want to do it. This is what I need to do it. This is how I need to do it. And then I'll be committed to doing it. I mean, um, you can Google Google online. I mean, goal setting. You set smart goals. So you set goals that are that are very clear, that are very simple. You set goals that are measurable. You, you set goals that are are, are are within the achievable what you can achieve. You set goals that are realistic, and you set goals that are time bound. All right. So that's basically what goal setting is. So in setting goals, um, you need to cast a vision. So what do you need to do in goal setting and vision casting is define and clarify the core objective and purpose while you're setting that goal. What you was the end product. Number two, develop an action plan, how you intend to go about it. All right. And number three, keep a ch um, challenges list and response plan. So most times people just plan and all they look is the positive side please when you know that you're setting say financial goal or building a business what the challenges also what is going to be the challenges okay finances might come time uh, it might be getting the right people it might be the economic situation it might be several things so please put them in perspective you, you're not building a negative mindset but what you're doing is preparing for the rainy days in fact, if you know, in fact, this is a military rule. Military, when military people are setting strategy, what they do is they look at their weak, weak points against their enemies. So when they know that, identify their weak points, what they do is now build courage, now build solid strategy there. They don't go wasting time in what they're already good at. Um, and, and that's how it works. So when you have a, if you know that you have money to build a business, that's not in your challenges list. But the challenge may be getting the right people, the faithful people, or you even as a person having the time or the commitment to run the business. Or you may be a, a working professional and then you want to maybe write an exams. One of the things maybe is paid in foreign currency and you're not factoring in what um, exchange rate will do to you because you just feel that you want to write. No, no, you don't. Keep a challenges list and how you intend to go about it, how you intend to beat all of them when they happen. Um, build crisis management plan and strategy. This is very important. Just a follow up to your challenges list. Crisis happen, but most people don't fulfill their goals and their objectives because they never plan for crisis. The Bible says in this world that you will always have troubles. I like that. <clears throat> but it says that God will always give, make a way out for you. 
And another place he says, there are temp- every temptation that you get yourself into, he says, it is common. Trust me, it is common. It's even easier these days to deal with crisis because if a crisis happens now, just put it one, ask a question on social media, you will get 1,000 um, solution. People will tell you how they, they responded to it. So build a crisis management plan, build it around your finances, build it around, around your health. If you're running a business, or okay, if you break down today, how do you respond? There are people that built crisis management plan that even when they are sick, they can walk where they are. But there are many people that don't prepare for crisis and when it happens, ha, they'll just cancel out themselves from what is happening. I mean, how do you you plan if if you're going to go on a, a, you're driving it? I mean, un- handling a business that you have to travel. I mean, and they and you don't plan for um, flight cancellations. You can't think around it. So once is you go to the airport and then they've canceled your flight, maybe one or two times. You might come back home and say it's as if this thing won't work again. I'm not even not supposed to do it. No, no, that's not how to go about it. Well, some people write, have written exams last day, they didn't pass, or two years ago, they didn't pass. Some people dumped it. Why? Because what it happened to me as well. But what I noticed that I didn't have a crisis management plan. It is in 2024 that certain things just pop on me. I said, oh, really? I would have actually have done A, B, or C. And before doing it. And why a crisis management plan is good is because you understand your strengths and your weaknesses. And there are certain things you're not meant to do at a particular time. That's what your crisis management plan reveals to you and your challenges list. Then, so, so conduct a smart goals health check. So in the smart goals you've, you've set, so conduct a health check around it, how you're performing, how you're faring, things you need to bring in, things you need to take out things you need to track you need to stay on um um so another second bucket is around um key priority areas so in your key priority areas you should look at your finances when you're setting your goals look at your health career when you're setting your goals look at family when you're setting your goals look at your spirituality your relationship with your creator um look at your health very importantly and also look at community. So impact, how, would, how, what, where, how, how do you want to impact your immediate community? What reputation do you want to build? Um, so identify the key elements around these areas, key elements around your finances, key elements around your career, key elements around family, key elements around spirituality, key elements around health, key elements around community. Then set performance metrics and, I mean, how you want to actually, I mean, track some things around these different areas and then also conduct a sort analysis. I've said this before in terms of your strengths, your weaknesses, opportunities and threats. So like, for example, your finances, what are your strengths currently? How much are you earning? Are you earning that much? Um, how stable is your job? So you bring things under it, how thriving, how is your business thriving? And then you want to look at your weaknesses um, in terms of your um, spending lifestyle, your debts and all. You look at weaknesses and all. And then in terms of opportunities, are there more alternative jobs you can do aside also you can do to give you more income? Or is there another job opportunity you can take to mean, I mean, grow your finances? And then you look at the threats. The threats are, is there a possibility of my company downsizing this year? Is there a possibility of me losing my job this year? Is there a possibility of the economy situation going so bad that, I mean, or is this a possibility that one of my suppliers won't be supplying me again? So you, or, or my critical staff will leave. So you conduct this. I mean, you can cascade. I mean, is the example I just gave for finances to other areas of your life. Um, finally, is goal goals mapping. So you look at um an impact effort metric. So this impact effort metrics is you have the list of all the goals that you set. All right. So what you want to do is um put them into a matrix. So this matrix is like four boxes. So the first one is the one that has high impact, all right, and requires very low effort. So that one is a quick win. So high impact, okay, you have high impact there. You have, I mean, whatever I need to do there, 
the impact is high, but you exert very little. I mean, I mean, I mean, effort to do it. There's another one that you, um, in terms of your major projects, those are the major things you need to do outside your quick wins. So those ones will bring you high impact, but they require you to also put in a lot to get it done. So you also create that bucket. Then you now create another bucket for things that are not really significant, but they are just there. If you if you can do it, it's good. So these ones don't require, they won't bring you high impact. They won't require much effort as well. So you can also bring that in. The final bucket are the ones that, yes, they will require you to put in a lot of effort, but necessarily the impact will be low. So create these four buckets. I'll just rehearse it again. Bucket one is high impact, low effort goals. Put them inside there. The other, those are the quick wins, things you can do easily. Um, the other one is high impact and high effort. So you need to do a lot, put in a lot to get it done. The other one now is now low impact, low effort. So just seven things um, that do small, small things you can do just for, I mean, make, make you feel happy. And finally, you have your I um, mean high effort and low impact things. So this way you'll be able to sit down and critically tell yourself at the end of the year, how have I performed um, very well? So like I started with a scripture in the book of, I mean, Proverbs 16 verse 3 says, put God in charge of your work, then what you have planned will come to pass will surely come to pass and in luke 14 verse 28 it says um if you want to do anything the first thing is for you to sit down and then figure out what it will cost you and then you know if it's going to work out or not so even anything at all you want to do you want to i mean i mean if they told people i mean three weeks ago or four weeks ago in nigeria for instance that they will they would have dropped their building project given the cost of um i mean building material even cement that's just had a very significant jump people wouldn't so that's why i said you put some of these things there it's not that you're not you don't have faith all right um but you are planning for the for the unknown even god and one of the things how way you can hack into this is that bring god into the context um god um, Paul was to embark on a journey, but God sat him down and told him, this is all that is going to happen in that journey. There's going to be a voyage. There's going to be storms. But God told, he said, he didn't tell, um, I mean, Paul not to go. He told him, you have to go. And, and he obeyed. So he went. So God was the one that created that challenges list for him. And then also gave him a crisis management plan. And these are also things as a Christian, you can get it. Yes, you can get it really. I mean, so that you don't lose focus and act out of the flesh. So thank you very much. Um, this show obviously is, is being brought to you by the Covenant Radio. And um, you can always link up with us at www.insightforliving.org forward slash radio. 6 10 p.m nigerian time so thank you very much i'll see you in the next episode on that setting sale for i mean 2024 i'll be talking about profile augmentation and updates for 2024 so thank you very much i'll see you in the next episode <laughs>